Good evening. Welcome to St. Mark the Evangelist, and thank you for worshiping with us. St. Mark, please asks you to keep your mask on at all times while attending Mass. We want to ensure we are keeping all of our parishioners safe. Thank you for your cooperation and your understanding. Welcome to St. Mark's for today's celebration of the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And now, please join in welcoming our celebrant, Father Rudy Ofori. Good afternoon, friends. You are all welcome to this evening Holy Mass. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we are here this evening to reflect on the talents that God has given to us. How best we can use, how best we are using our talents for the good of one another. And so, let us go deep into our hearts and see our shortcomings, our failures, and ask God for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've not listened in my thoughts and my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying, peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me bears much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. I'm taking the short form. Jesus told his disciple this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to teach according to his ability, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Gospel of the Lord. We all have so many fine qualities of mind, soul, and body given freely to us by God. They are like the talents handed by the master to his servants in the parable. Before he left on his trip, God expects us to develop our talents and gifts. He expects us to put them to maximum use for God and for humanity. Alike, the woman in the Proverbs, she is praised because with her gifts, she brought her husband happiness day by day, made clothes for her children, and reached out her hand to the poor. Are we all putting our gifts to their maximum use? Not really. Experts say that an average person uses only 10% of their mind's potential. Would we ever tolerate our car operating at only 10% of its capacity? God expects us to put to maximum use even our small, ordinary talents. Many ordinary people are slow to realize that their contribution can really affect the quality of life around them. Even a single personal gift is important. None of us should be like the one talented man of the parable who could not use that his talent was value to God and humanity. What matters is not how big or how many are our gifts, but how faithful and wholehearted are we in the use of them. We should not compare our gifts with others enviously, thus limiting ourselves to mega tax. Of course, our gifts vary, but why? A Jew went to his rabbi or rabbi 
and demanded to know why God distributes his gifts unequally. The rabbi whispered, not so loud. God might hear you say, if you are anxious to know, come up here and find out. That is wise advice. Each of us receives God's gifts in different measures, and he has a purpose. Each is born into a different family in circumstances that are different. The influences of individuals varies, and the opportunities they receive differ. Even though God gives sufficient to all. Yet, how easily we envy those who live more glamorous life than we do. Those who acquire notoriety and very easily gain great wealth. The media, especially TV, glorifies the actor singer or footballer. Even though their personal lives may be very empty and poor. The majority lives unglamorous, undistinguished lives, but are they any less happy for it? Just think of the variety of gifts God has given to every human being. All have the gift of love, but a love which by its very nature demands sharing of life with others. We Christians have the gift of light, but, and as children of light, we are called to enlighten, conduct doing good and not evil, reflecting God's own goodness in the world. We have the gift of God's word, which is so precious and powerful that we have no right to hide it. We must preach it and teach it. All people have the gift of a basic sense of justice, which calls us to combat injustice in the world and to plant the seeds of justice in the soil of human hearts. Many have artistic gifts. Artists, sculptors, musicians are called to use their gifts to beautify creation and to, and to glorify God. All have the gift of time and are called to use it not only on themselves, but in the service of the community. All have the gifts of money, more or less. People who make maximum use of their money will not hold it back or hoard it for themselves. Rather, keeping their own personal needs simple. They will be generous in sharing it with others. But we are all bond servants and trusted with talents. That, that are not ours. The Lord, who is the source of gifts, of all gifts, will return to acts of an account. The man who goes on a journey abroad and, and returns after a long time is an image of Christ who has journeyed to the Father and is expected to return again. The test required to ensure a favorable judgment is whether we made full use of our gifts for the growth of his kingdom on earth. Are we secure with our accounts? Once the Wall Street Journal reported that more business people fail because of poor record keeping, than for any other reason. They think that things are going 
along fine. But when unexpected bills come, they go bankrupt. Likewise, some people think that they are in good spiritual shape when in fact they may have nothing in their heavenly bank account. Our present life is a fertile field ready to be filled. The seeds of truth, justice, love, which we plant today will surely germinate soon and flourish to the glory of the kingdom of God and when the master returns unexpectedly like a thief. In the night, we will be lauded for breaking new ground. On the contrary, if we neglect our opportunities to plant and nurture the Christian seeds, we will lose not only the opportunities, but also our talents. Have a lovely evening. Shall we please rise? I believe in one God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us present the knees before God our Father, who is so gentle to us and to hear our needs. For the church, that as the bride of Christ, we may be worthy of the gifts with which we have been entrusted, reaching out our hands to the poor and extending our arms to the needy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. That people around the world, especially those who have been given great responsibilities, may strive to use their talents to the benefit of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are. For religious sisters who have dedicated their lives to reaching out their hands to those in need as they live out the charisms of their community. We pray to the Lord. Lord. That we may be children of light, worthy of imitation in the way we care for our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For Janet Morno Sheehan, Jackie Williams, Celeste Manka, and St. Mark's parishioners, and the repose of the soul of Ernie Edwards and Clyde and Stephanie Edwards, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord we remember our stance in this Mass, and we pray for all those who are going through COVID-19 stress, that the good Lord will grant them peace 
We ask all these through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may offer in the sight of your majesty, may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you, and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We said, you see, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly employ you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as you celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant, us, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we will rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world 
all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace. I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we to be at the supper of the Lamb. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of these sacred mysteries, humbly employing you, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. And take care of yourself of the pandemic. Give me.